We're going over today the uninstallation of the winter turf sensors. If by chance you have someone else doing the uh, uninstallation of these sensors, this might be helpful so they know how to delicately remove the sensors without causing any damage to them so they can be shipped back to the university for diagnostics after the winter and also for retrieving data from the micro SD cards inside of the logger box. So for removing our sensors, a couple tools will be helpful. Some sort of a hand trowel to help with getting the soil out of your hole. A pry bar or some other tool to gently lift your plug up. I would recommend that it's something that has more of a blunt tip because we don't want to accidentally cut any of the wires that are in the hole. A bucket in order to keep your soil contained while you're removing it out because then it will need to go back in the hole. Something to kneel on is also helpful. Um, to keep from indentations and getting your knees wet. So the first step is we're going to gently remove our plugs that we're covering up our wires, lifting them to reveal the edges so we can take them out. As I said before, the tool that you're using for this, something that isn't sharp is beneficial in case you've forgotten where those wires are going in and we don't want to do any damage to them because we'd like to reuse these sensors in the future. Just place our plugs in our bucket, and then we can start seeing where our wires are in the hole here. And the next step is just to gently remove the soil and put it in our bucket so we can get to where the sensors are in the hole walls here. It might also be helpful to go back and review what side you put them in or mark them in. But if you don't remember, as we're gently removing things in here, it will be clear the wires will show you where they go. We can see going over here is where our O2 and our CO2 sensors were, at the one inch depth. And over here on this other side, we can gently remove the soil. And we'll see that our first sensors that we pull out here, a temperature sensor at a half of an inch. And on the other side of this hole over here, we'll have our soil moisture sensor. Gradually wiggle those out. On the other side here, we have our soil oxygen and CO2 sensors. See those cables are coming out of there. Gentle wiggle to see when it starts getting free. Take those out. Our CO2 sensor. And then the other side is our oxygen sensor. Since those are removed, our next sensors will be our three inch sensors for our temperature our soil moisture hand trowel here just to help move some of that and since we don't need to go deeper on this side because that was only our one inch sensor but we are going to want to backfill the soil into those holes so we pretty much are just digging on this other side um, we'll have to have enough room to get out our soil moisture sensor there we'll just gently work our way down seeing our next cable here for our temperature sensor Soil moisture, Maybe a little bit more soil removed. One of the things that will be helpful to look at for removal is the actual data on what your temperatures are. If you were thawed on the surface but frozen down below, it will be very, very hard to try to remove those sensors because they'll still be frozen into the ground. Um, and I wouldn't recommend removing them at that point because there'll still be some interesting data coming from them. And also you more than likely will damage um, the soil moisture sensor trying to get it out of the ground. So we've gotten down to our deepest sensor at six inches. We can see our wires are coming in there. Our temperature on the one side easily comes out. Now the more delicate one, the soil moisture on the other side, we want to gently find the back end of it with our finger. Gently pull to see if it'll wiggle out. If not, we'll have to excavate a little bit more soil around it. It just got pushed into this, the wall of that cup cutter. So moving a little bit more soil out of there and gently as it comes, um, if you don't have to pull out more soil from the O2 and CO2 sensor side, you don't. But because this is a long sensor, you may just have to gently slide her back out. And then we're good to go. 
And the final step will be we'll go back in here and we'll just fill our hole back up. Probably want to throw a little bit more soil into those three quarter inch tubing holes in the side walls for the soil moisture sensor, just so we don't have a whole bunch of drop in there. We're going to backfill in our main cup cutter hole. We're also then going to be pushing in soil into those three quarter inch holes that we created for the back end of the soil moisture sensor. And then add more soil back into our hole and then we're going to backfill also into the inch and a half tubing holes that we created for our O2 and CO2 sensor. So along with your bucket, it's good to bring along some extra sand profile, uh, whether it's your top dressing sand or you actually have saved the sand to remove from the hole because you're going to have all that space that you need to fill in for the CO2 and O2 sensors. So if you don't bring any along, you'll be short. Now that we've finished filling into our hole up to about where the depth of the plug is, we can put our plug back in there. If your plug happens to look really horrible, like this one does because it got dried out during the winter, um, you can cut one hopefully from a nursery green and fill it in, um, or we can just see whether or not these are going to pop back up. Um, they've got a little bit of green on them. And then we just are going to finish matching up our plugs so that they look nice and uniform and will create a putting surface that will be acceptable to our golfers and members. A little bit extra top dressing might be needed around your cracks here, um, a little extra care, but hopefully with the signage and communication with your members, they'll be understanding and realize that this information that we're gathering helps create a better golfing environment for the spring. If we can understand why the grass is dying in the winter, and then create some means to help mitigate that in the future. So after we have filled our hole back in, we've pulled our sensors out of the ground, we can take our box off of the site here, take our sod staples out. Our next step is to take our logger box. We need to take the cover off uh, and shut the power off. You can do that on site if you'd like, otherwise you can take it to your shop. We then ask that you will put this and pack this back up in the box that you got so we can ship it back to us. The key for this is that we can then do post-mortem analysis to see if any sensors or loggers did not perform how we thought they were going to. And if you happen to have your sensor in a location where you did not have good cell reception, all of your data is stored on a micro SD card in there so we can then extract that data, share it with you if you're interested in it, but also use that data to assess whether or not your site had damage or didn't have damage and what the soil conditions look like in that area to help us gather why turf dies or doesn't die in the winter.